you guys doing today? I'm doing very well because I get to take apart this broken OzCharge Rescue Mate 1000 Amp Jump Starter. Now, this isn't just any ordinary jump starter. It doesn't have a lead acid battery, it doesn't have a lithium battery. What it has is a supercapacitor, or rather a supercapacitor bank. So, uh, while I undo it, I'll talk to you about what a supercapacitor is, based on my very limited knowledge, must I say. So, essentially, batteries store energy in the chemical form. So, they, they have an anode and a cathode, and they've got chemicals inside, which move between the anode and the cathode, based on the state of charge. Again, very limited knowledge. Whereas, capacitors, what they do is they store energy electrically through an electric field. So they've got two plates right next to each other, separated by a dielectric, so some type of insulator, so the electricity doesn't jump between the two plates. And because there's a difference in voltage between the two plates, there is energy stored. Now, the difference between these two things is that capacitors, they store a lot less energy for the same uh, ener uh, for the same volume and the same weight. They can also discharge their energy much faster and charge much faster as well. And they also have a lot longer cycle life. So how many times they can be fully charged, fully discharged and repeat. Now, supercapacitors, from what I understand, they're pretty much based off of the capacitor um, design uh, with some slight modifications. I'm going to actually just do a bit of research and I'll get right back to you. Okie dokie, I'm back and from what I can find the main difference between a capacitor and a supercapacitor is that supercapacitors use um, graphite or some type of uh, carbon, form of carbon, which gives them much larger surface area compared to the metal that's generally used in capacitor plates and because of that larger surface area they're able to store more energy it's just as simple as that it's just about the amount of area available for storing charge Ooh, far out and yeah so obviously they have higher energy density than capacitors and uh i believe longer life as well um don't quote me on that one though so what I'm going to do, I've got all the screws undone, I'm going to flip her over, maybe not, no, I'm just going to see what's actually stopping us from taking it apart, if anything. Okay, it really does feel like there's a screw holding us back. Ah, oh, big brain. Okay. Word of advice before you go all gun ho about ugh, uh, prying at things, it can be really beneficial to just have a look to make sure you're not missing any screws or clips or anything that could be keeping the device together. So I know in this case, I'm finding that some of the screws are still somewhat connected. And I also think that there is clips just here. So I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver, which I'm just going to get. And we'll try and get these clips apart. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Here we go. I'm just going to... Again, being very careful not to... Actually, okay, so there go all the screws. That's fine. Um, oh, it looks really cool inside. I can't wait to show you guys. Okay, give me a second. I'm just gonna try and get this all undone and I'll stop talking.
inches apart. Wow. Look at that. There is a lot going in on there. On in there. Excuse my poor English. Let's see if we can get a better view. I'm going to come around camera side so that I can make sure you guys are seeing all of this. Okay. So, in here, we've got a couple things. Engage flashlight. Let's go. Awesome. Okay. So, down in the back there, we've got our super capacitors. They're the big cylindrical things. It looks like we have five super capacitors in total. On this circuit board here, really thick traces. These have been beefed up with copper. And the reason behind that is copper is really conductive in comparison to the metal that's uh, in the solder, so nickel and lead. It's much more conductive, so they put copper on there to make sure that the traces can actually carry the current needed to start the car. In addition to that, we have a big kachonka chonk relay just here. I'm going to see if I can read the ratings on it. Nope, I cannot. But essentially what that is, it's just a big switch and that allows us to determine when we want power going to the starter motor or to the, the battery, which then the car uses to start. Over in here, we've got what is called a DC to DC converter. So it steps up the voltage from a car battery, especially a dead car battery, won't have enough voltage to start the car, obviously. So it might only be three volts or something. And what this will do, it'll take three volts and use it boost it up to charge the capacitors at a slower rate so it'll be like a constant wattage or constant current sort of thing and it will take a low voltage from a dead battery and pump it up to charge the capacitors now i'm just looking around to see possible causes of destruction um Trying to see if there's anything burnt. That's the main thing you, you look for. Okay. Let me see if I can get, get a better angle for you guys. Joking. Here we are. It's not that much better, to be honest. But at least you can see some of the stuff. I'll let you get a, a good picture of the part number on the capacitors there for anyone who's curious. And I'm trying to read the label on them. It's kind of hard, though, so I might just have to search up the name. Uh, oh, 2.7 volts, how many microfarads, or farads, farads in this case, so that's the unit of charge, whoops, there we go, out of focus, so look, I can't see any obvious burnt things, um, but what I can see is on this wire here, we've actually got pieces of copper fraying off, so there is a real chance that what's happened is some copper has come off there and messed with some of the circuitry or whatever, like shorted across a connection. Um, just trying to see anything. Honestly, can't, can't see anything like obviously damaged, but I'll show you the issue, like what happens. I'll put it back together and I'll show you what's going on. Yeah. Whoop, just kick the tripod as you do. Right now, <coughs> I've got a charging plug. I'm going to turn the unit on. Now, the issue is we're not getting any charge, so it's it's very clearly saying it's not charging. Um, yeah, so for some reason we're having that issue, and even if you connect it to a 12 volt battery, same issue. So I'm not sure what's going on. I think it's something to do with the DC to DC converter, honestly, because. The display still works, it's still showing voltage, but it's just that the rest of it isn't happening. So what I'll do, I'll get an NBN battery, and we'll, I'll just show you the charging thing. So here's the DVO, right? When you connect this to a 12 volt battery, what it should do is light up on the display. Cool. If I can connect it. Cool. So we've got light. 
uh, what? What? Okay. I was wrong. Wait. Ooh, it just stopped charging. Oh, dang. Here you go. Okay. So it stopped charging now. Let's see if I can make it charge any further. Yeah, so it's stuck in that spot now. Oh, something weird's going on. So it charged for a second, but then I heard a click from the relay and it just stopped. Why? Why? Yeah, okay. Now, I have no clue. Guys, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas. Um, but yeah, I think we're just going to have to claim a warranty on this thing because it's just, like, what do you do? Well, let's try it again. One more time. Try not to damage the NBN battery while you're at it. Okay. See? It's not charging. That's the problem. Because it needs to be up to 13 or 14 volts to actually work. And the reason for that is, um, if you look at a super capacitor charge curve or capacity curve, um, you really have to charge them up to their full voltage to get full capacity out of them. Otherwise, you're only getting a fraction of what you could be. So yeah, it has to charge up to 13 or 14 volts before it can try and start the car. And it's not doing that. So it won't let you actually do the starting which is an issue, obviously. And there you go. Okay, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bless you.